What's up guys, Jake with Tan Tactical coming with another special follow-up video. Today, we're taking another look at the Black Aces Tactical FD-12 Bullpup Tactical, mind you, Tactical Shotgun. This is a semi auto shotgun that you can usually get for a very good budget-friendly price. I actually got this one for 350 bucks on PSA, but you can find it cheaper, 300, sometimes even less than that if you look carefully enough and it's on sale. We're making this video today because a lot of you guys have requested a follow-up video. This is one of the few firearms I actually haven't done a final review on. And it was like two years ago when we first did our initial first shots video. So I thought today, after getting all your requests and comments, I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and just touch on this thing again and let you know how we still feel about it after two years of shooting it off and on since our initial first shots video. All right. You think we should put it underneath the shirt? I think it's fine. I'm fine with it. Okay. What, how do you feel about it? That's what's important. I like turtles. <laughs> now in our initial video, we did go over all the specs and features of the shotgun. We're not going to do that today. You can go ahead and look at that first video we did if you want all that information. But we are going to cover some of the issues that some people have and just clarify a few things in the original video. Oh man. I think <laughs> kicks like a mule. <laughs> the big elephant room, this is a Turkish shotgun. But one that may not be so familiar may get that impression because it says Black Aces Tactical, Longwood, Florida, USA on the side there. This is actually from Turkey and imported by Black Aces Tactical into the United States where they do provide some sort of form of support for it depending on who you ask. A lot of people have issues with these shotguns because since they are Turkish, consider them to be quite junk, quite cheap, and not good materials or manufacturing. A lot of people in the comments said things about how it wouldn't cycle for them, that they couldn't get replacement parts, that they just had a terrible time with it because of all the issues of mechanical stuff inside. But with that being said, I want to give you my experience and also take this opportunity to kind of give a response to some of the comments from our last video. Now, a lot of you guys got really butthurt because in my original intro, you claim I was swinging a loaded shotgun at my friend's direction. Yeah, this clip right here caught a lot of flack because we actually don't edit everything in one take and we don't just point loaded firearms towards each other, ever. Here's the mostly unedited clip that we originally took between shots. It smells delightful. It actually really does. Okay. I like this angle. You got a good angle here? I'm recording. You're live. Okay, go ahead. Make it happen, Captain. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, so. Go, Eric. Go, Curry. Louder. Go, what? Curry. Let me get him from... Look at me real quick. Uh, <laughs> three, two. Go, Curry. Either a lot of you guys really care about us and are really concerned about our safety, or a lot of you guys don't give a crap about us and just want to chew our butts out. I'm not really sure which it is. Comment down below which one you think it is. A lot of you guys agree that it does require a breaking period. I got it! Who would have thought? Got nothing. Ugh. Yes, this is true. And in addition, a lot of you said that it does in fact have a little bit of trouble with low brass stuff, a lot of your target bird shots. However, you can get higher brass bird shot to kind of make up for that, and it seems to cycle more reliably. Now, while Black Aces Tactical says you do have a lifetime warranty, in reality, you effectively have no warranty because apparently you'll not be able to get anything done with their customer service, as it's basically non-existent. A lot of common issues have been failure to feed, eject, return to battery, pick rails out spec, stripping the barrel nut, and uh, not staying tight, coming loose, because I guess the barrel itself is actually threaded into cast aluminum. The consensus has typically been that it's kind of a luck of the draw situation where you might get a good one like we got, or you might get one that has some of those issues. A lot of you guys noticed that Brett was limp wristing it when he was shooting it kind of from the waist, and that was causing a lot of the feeding issues as well. This is true. Do not limp wrist it. As far as the velocity for your shotgun shells go, to make it cycle reliably, the consensus seems to be anything above 1100. Some people said 1200 feet per second and above. Some people are saying as high as 1400 feet per second. In my opinion, I think anything about 1100, 1200 feet per second should be safe. Some people have asked me if you can run slugs through it. Yes, you can. Um, 
as long as you keep the open choke on. Don't use any other chokes that could possibly tighten the grouping for like pellets and birdshot, buckshot, stuff like that. You want the open cylinder choke only. You think it'll bounce? I think it's gonna blow a damn hole in it. Oh, you think it'll go through? You think it'll bounce? If it I don't go through, it it's gonna damn make a hell of a dent. Okay. I want you two over on this side because yeah. the way it's gonna ricochet, if it bounces, it might come that way. Some of you guys asked me what kind of sling I was using. It's the same one I've got right here. It's an El Cheapo Amazon sling for like 20 or 30 bucks. Let's go take a look. Can't remember the exact brand of it, but it's like a paracord material essentially. I like it. Uh, very comfortable for me at least. As far as the end of the intro goes, where it seems like Eric was turned by the Orange Crush Overlord, well, we've got a whole playlist of awesome intros for you that go back to back, all the videos in order, so you can kind of see the overall storyline. If you're into some of the theatrical cinematic stuff, kind of a lot of opinions on the uh, actual shotgun itself. I mean, honestly, it's been good for me. Now, I I have had some issues with it though. For example, my, uh, well, you can kind of see on this side here, you'll see I'm actually missing one of my QD attachment points there. Mine actually loosened up from the screw and bolt there that holds it together and it fell out. I lost it and I actually had to get another one. Now, I will say this, they did come through for me, not because I'm a YouTuber. This was obviously back when I was like only 50 subscribers or something. I sent them a message basically saying, hey, my QD attachment point fell out. Looks like it got loose, I can't find it. Can you guys just send me another one? I can attach it myself if you can just ship it out to me to my address. I never heard back from them as far as like an actual email or some kind of response, but it did in fact show up at my house ready to go from them. So that was great on them for actually sending it out to us free of charge. Now, because I did not actually get a response from Black Aces Tactical and didn't know they were sending it out, I did order this one off of Amazon, this key attachment point here, and just stuck it on there with a nut and bolt back here. I wasn't really using this side, but you can see that's where I went ahead and ran that nut and bolt through there. Now I do have the replacement one they sent me, but honestly at this point, I already had this one on, the replacement from Amazon. Didn't really feel like swapping it out and putting that one on back. I was kind of good to go. However, I do have it if I need it. What the hell? <laughs> Let me, it's the fuzzy How dare you touch my face? <laughs> <laughs> as far as getting more expensive replacement parts sent to you, if I were to say need some kind of new trigger housing, bolt carrier or something, I don't know um, how I'd go about doing that. I'm sure there's got to be some people out there making stuff to replace the original parts, but it's not been an issue for me, so I've not really gone out of my way to do that. Now, if this is the only shotgun you have, I do think it's a decent option for self-defense at home. I still would prefer a pump shotgun just because you've got that manual reloading process that, yeah, you can short stroke it by accident under pressure, but it's guaranteed to be more versatile on different types of loads because you're going to be the one that actually cycles it. But birdshot's typically not something you want to run in this, at least not low brass birdshot. Anything high brass, such as buckshot or slugs. I do still have the Bushnell TRS-25 on there. Um, Probably would need something bigger like a Hollow Sun or an EOTech because there's a lot of recoil. And for me, yeah, you know, it's not such a big deal holding that recoil. You've got your vertical grip here they give you as well. So maintaining that control, that red dot and that recoil, it's not really an issue, but again, under pressure, it may be something worth getting so that you don't have issue finding your red dot. The bottom line is it's always gonna depend on your situation and your living environment. If you have an apartment, for example, that shares walls, you may not necessarily wanna run something that has buckshot and slugs in it that can easily penetrate those sheetrock walls and kill your neighbors. Uh, you may wanna go with either burst shot, in which case you'd get probably a pump shotgun, or maybe get something else like nine millimeter with hollow point or something like that. But I don't think you'd want to use this in any kind of setting that's more, I guess, suburban than where we're currently shooting at today. You know, again, we're being safe out here, flat range LARPing and all that, and our little berm that we set up down there probably wouldn't do this in a typical cookie cutter neighborhood. So to wrap things up, yeah, I'm still having good luck with it. Uh, your luck may vary. Seems to be luck of the draw. Seems to really prefer high brass or high velocity Shotgun rounds, as long as you keep those things in mind, I think it should be an enjoyable experience for you. And if you have to use it for self-defense, so like a home defense setting, it should be okay for you to do that too, as long as you keep some of those things we talked about in mind.
Guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Remember, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Have you picked up a Black Aces Tactical Shotgun? Did this video help answer some of your questions? Hope to hear from you. We will see you, well, empty mag, next time. Good. That's awesome.